Hi there, this is Unmesh from Pix Imperfect. I hope you're having a great day and if not, I'm sure that you, my friend, are doing your best to make it an awesome one. Today, I'm going to share with you how to fix harsh lighting in Photoshop. In other words, how to remove extremely harsh shadows and extremely harsh highlights and overall dim it down. And it's super easy to do. So without any further ado, let's get started. Back in the magical and mystical world of Photoshop and if you want to go ahead and download this photo and follow along, you my friend already know what to do. Check the links in the description. Now if you have a look at this photo, there's tons and tons of super highlight areas, hotspot areas that we need to fix. Along with that, we have lots of extreme harsh shadow areas. Now there is a way in which you can dodge and burn to completely remove it and make it seem as if there was no shadow at all and we have a video on that. But in cases like this, it can be very time consuming and sometimes it can even take you 4-5 or five hours to achieve that. And it's kind of impossible to do that for every single project. A more realistic approach here is to dim it down. And here's how to do it. Also, before we proceed further, I want to let you know that in Photoshop, please do not memorize the steps. Look at the image and see what the problem is and tackle that problem. Once you tackle that problem, see what the next problem is if you can see it. Then tackle that and go from there. Every image is different. Every situation is different. Every preference is different. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and get started with this. The very first problem that we notice here are the extremely harsh shadows. You might notice the highlights, so tackle that first. Tackle the biggest problems first, all right? So to tackle the shadows, the best way and the easiest way is Camera Raw. So with the background layer selected, press Ctrl or Command J to make a duplicate. And you can name this removing or dimming down shadows, whatever you wish. Now before we apply Camera Raw filter, we want the ability to change the values later. And how do we make that happen? By converting this layer into a smart object. So with that layer selected, let's go to filter and then convert for smart filters. This will convert that layer into a smart object. Now let's go to filter and then camera raw filter. And it's very self-explanatory. I hate this. I downloaded this soda PDF for something and it just kind of pops up all the time. So let me just take care of that real quick. I don't want to upgrade, man. Anyway, uh, uh, let's go to filter and then camera raw filter. And in here, as the name suggests, just simply increase the shadows. Let's increase it all the way to the right hand side. But still, it's not satisfactorily, if that's a word, removed. We want more. So hit OK. Now I know, I understand this can be done with adjustment brushes, but since we are working with smart objects, why not just apply it again? To do that, hold the Alt key or the Option key, click and drag it at the top and drop it. Now we have double of the same. Now you might think this is too much and of course this is too much, you're absolutely right. We only want to apply it in certain areas and there are two ways we can do that. We can work with this mask right here or you can create a mask of this layer. That's up to you. So for the sake of convenience, let's work with the mask that comes free with it. Because why not? Select the mask and press Ctrl or Command I. Whenever you add a smart filter to a smart object, it comes with a mask. So with the mask black, take the brush white as the foreground color and take a soft round brush and paint back in the areas where you just want to recover the shadows. So let's paint back here, the other side as well. And you don't have to do it for the rest of the areas if you don't want to. It's up to you. It's your artistic perspective, right? Let's say we were taking this photo and we placed a reflector so that the reflector only throws light on her face. So in that case, you don't have to do it all. So I feel that this might be enough for this image. Now the only problem that we see here that it's also brightening extreme dark areas and there's a lack of dark contrast here. So how do we get that back? We don't want to apply it in the extreme dark areas and to do that simply use Blend If. So double click on the right hand side of this layer and take the slider of the underlying layer from left to right. But again, this will be harsh and we also wanted to apply a little bit of that in the eye area. So let's break it apart. Hold the Alt key or the Option key, click on the slider to break it apart and this will break down the transition between which areas are hidden and which areas show up. So you want to remove it from the dark areas but not so much. So this seems to be a nice number to be around. So have a look. Here's the before. No sense of contrast. Here's the after. Looks more 
natural and realistic. Now, if you look at the overall face, there's a ton of highlights, right? And also there's stark contrast in some areas. So let's try decreasing the contrast in the midtones and the highlight areas. And the best way to do that, actually, in my opinion, the best way to do that is curves. Hands down, no doubt about it. And if you watch Pix Imperfect, you are already a fan of curves. Anyway, I'm assuming too much. Let's create a curves adjustment layer. And then, with the help of the hand right there, and you don't even have to think about which areas to create a point on, you don't have to guess anything. Just use the hand and just pick an area where you think the highlights are just too much. Also make sure the sample size is five by five, not point sample, three by three or five by five. You want an average sample, not pinpoint a pixel because that can be misleading. So let's go with five by five and let's take a sample of this area. And you don't even have to deal with the curve here. Just drag it down right there. So we wanna just make it a little darker. This seems about right. And for the dark areas, we wanna bring them back up. So let's say this is one dark area that we want to bring them, bring it back up. So click and simply drag it up. That's it. This adds a little bit of evenness. Take a look. Here's the before. Here's the after. It's more even. Now again, we don't want to apply it all throughout. So select the mask, press Ctrl or Command I and just simply paint on the face. Now, if you also wanted to remove the shadows beneath her face on the neck, you can do that. We are just doing the face for this tutorial. All right, let's paint on the face with white as the foreground color. Great, now you can fine tune this to your liking. All right, this looks good to me. Now, if you feel that the colors are changing, for me, it's fine, but if you feel that way, you can also change the blend mode to luminosity and see what kind of an effect it holds. So this is luminosity and this is normal. It's up to you what you choose. I prefer the normal one. Now it's time for us to absolutely remove the highlights. And if you think that you're gonna go ahead and create a curves adjustment layer and just take it down and only apply it on the highlights, that just won't work right. Because there are some places in the highlights where the details are absolutely lost. There's so much shine in there. We just have to replace it. That's the only way out, unfortunately. So let's go ahead and delete that. That was just for show. Now, we need to create a stamp visible layer for us to work on it because we're gonna be using the patch tool and patch tool requires the stamp visible layer, unlike the regular healing brush tool or the spot healing brush tool, which can sample all the layers. Patch tool, you have to have it in all one layer. So press Control, Alt, Shift and E, Command, Option, Shift and E on a Mac. This will create a merged layer of everything that you see in the canvas right now, okay? And you can name this, Remove Highlights. Now, all we gotta do here is to select the patch tool Okay, it would be in this group. And then just make a selection of the highlight areas. Make sure source is selected. And then this is an highlight area that we do wanna get rid of. Let's select that. And now just drag it to a non-highlight area. And it's removed, but it's too much. So how do we decrease the effect of it? Press Control Shift F, Command Shift F, or go to Edit, Fade, Patch Selection. Now this is too much, decrease the opacity. Slowly and gradually increase it to what you like. I'm gonna go with 44, hit OK. Easier to type again and again. Now here, let's do the same for this one. Let's make a selection of that area and go to a non-highlight area. Make sure it's not that different. Make sure the replacement kind of looks okay the way you see it now. Okay, done. Now press Control Shift F, Command Shift F. That's the shortcut for it. 44, hit OK. Press Control or Command D to deselect. Let's make a selection of this area. And by the way, if you hold the Alt key or the Option key, you can draw a straight line. So that's a tip right there. Okay, let's finish that. And let's go to a non-highlight area. And we can fix the top and the bottom later. Don't worry about it now. Press Control Shift F, Command Shift F, 44 here again. Hit OK. I don't think we need to fix. This looks perfect. Let's go for this one. I feel we selected extra, so hold the Alt key or the Option key. This turns into minus, subtraction, and take away the extras. We want as much of the original pixels as possible. Then let's take it to a non-highlight area again. This looks all right. Press Control Shift F, Command Shift F, 44 here as well. Press Control or Command D. Now let's have a look. Here's the before, here's the after. We got rid of most of the highlights. Looks pretty good, doesn't it? Now let's zoom out. I feel that a little more contrast might help. 
So let's create one more cursed adjustment layer. At this point, we are just fixing the little problems that we see. There are no particular written in stone steps involved here. All right, just to let you know that Photoshop is not a software where you memorize the steps where there's a protocol. There's none. You are the artist. This is an artist software. So please feel free to break the rules as really there are none. I'm going to take the slider on the left to the right just to add a little more contrast. But then again, only have it in certain dark areas of the image. So double click on the right hand side of the layer and take it away from the highlights. Okay, just have it in dark areas. Hold the Alt key or the Option key and click on it to break it apart. Just have it in certain dark areas. Hit OK. And again, we don't want it in all of the places. Select the mask, press Ctrl or Command I, take the brush and only paint over areas where you feel that you need to darken things. All right, done. And also, if you feel that in the process, you might have brightened the eyebrows too much, no problem. You can create another curves adjustment layer. Just take it down just a bit, not too much. Select the mask, press Ctrl or Command I, and just zoom in and paint with white over the eyebrows. That way, you'll get the details back there. And they will be more defined, just like mine. <laughs> Kidding. Anyway, so that is done. Erase the extras and decrease the opacity if you think it's too much. So I'm going to go with about 40%. The last thing I see here are the teeth. Only if the teeth would have been a little bit brighter, we could cast her for a Colgate advertisement. So let's go ahead and create a curves adjustment layer and simply just drag it up. That's all you got to do. And again, if we brighten it all up, it might not look realistic. So take it away from the dark areas. So double click on the right hand side of the layer and hold the Alt key or the Option key Click on the slider on the left, break it apart, and take it gradually. Okay. This looks all right. Just focus on the teeth, not the other areas. Select the mask, press Ctrl or Command I, take the brush, white as the foreground color, and just paint over the teeth areas. That's it. Remove the extras. And again, decrease the opacity. This is just too bright. Let's go with 35. So that helps. And you can also go back to Blendif to kind of play that and see what works for you. So I feel that if I take it a little more to the right, might make it a little more natural. Okay, there you go, my friend. Want to take a look at the before and after? So here is the before. Just look at it. And here is the after. See? And you can do other parts of the image as well. We just did the face for the sake of this tutorial. And this is how to do it. Also, in the end, I would recommend, personal recommendation, select the topmost layer, hold the shift key and select the bottommost layer where you adjusted something without the background layer selected. So select all of that and put it in a group. Press Ctrl or Command G. And then decrease the overall opacity to decrease the intensity. So I'm going to go with about 75%. And if you want more, you can always go to 100. That's your personal preference. But as humans, we sometimes tend to go overboard and we overdo things. So this is an essential friend. And as always, I say that all the time, opacity is your best friend. So that's how to recover images from harsh lighting in Photoshop. And again, there are no particular steps involved. Look at the problem, look at the biggest problems and fix that first and slowly move on to the smaller problems. That's how I look at things. And if you look at things the other way, that's all right too. You are an artist, my friend. So the way we did it is we created a copy of the background layer. We applied remove shadows twice, not actually remove shadows. We just increased the shadows in camera raw. And if you needed more, you can apply it thrice as well. That's up to you. That would be crazy bonkers. Anyway, after we did that, we used masks to only apply it in certain areas where we wanted to remove the shadows. After that, it's all adding little contrasts here and there, making the image look more realistic. And also we remove the highlights and there are some highlight areas which you just cannot darken with a curve. You have to replace it. There is no other way. So with the help of the patch tool, we replaced it. But then again, it was too much. So we faded that area by using edit fade patch selection or press the shortcut control shift F command shift F. Got it? I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. I would like to take this moment to thank all these nice and amazing people for supporting this channel on Patreon and helping keep Pixim Perfect free for everybody forever. 
Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.